All right, Bones, here we are, ready for the Division I state championship. Like, I know this to be true. This is uh, Max Zukowski leading off for the Division I state championship. Here alongside me is Jeff Hall, all the way from Canada. Ple announce our final. Pleasure to be here, Max. We have the Pulaski Roos versus the Whitefish Bay Berserkers. What do you think about this mascot matchup, Jeff? Uh, I think if a Berserker ever did fight a Roo, uh, it would be a bloody and bouncy affair, Max. So let's hope that we have uh, the bounciness without the blood here today at Breeze Stevens Field in Madison. As we get ready for the Division One Championship, head over to our PA announcer, Phil Winkler, for the starting lineups. Starting for the Pulaski Roos as the away team, we have number one, Tyler Voshileski, number two, Jeremy Bartles, number three, Max Muller. In the locks, we have number four, John Shipansky, and Mark Berna, number five. Our flankers are number six, Scotty Sell, and number seven, Caleb Vanderloop. Locking down the pack at number eight is Hunter Van Vehoven, and scrum half Noah Thiem. Fly half number 10, Logan Shimansky. At wings we have number 11, Dominic Hendricks, and number 14, Sequoia Rasmussen. In the centers, number 12, Jacob Hames, and number 13, Levi Van Halen. And at fullback, Dominic and Epper. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is Jeff Ho with you. I, for those of you interested in who I am, I am the featured rugby columnist for CNN's Bleacher Report Exciting and the voice of the USA the Rugby National Championships, which were held in U Madison, Wisconsin this past weekend. I'm pleased to bring you the play-by-play -play for this match between the Pulaski Fighting Roos and the Whitefish, Whitefish Bay Berserkers. Whitefish in black on the field to my broadcast left. Pulaski in purple stripes to my broadcast right, and it is the Pulaski Ruse in possession, and they spin the ball wide, looking for space early on in this match. We just finished an outstanding and very hotly contested match in our Division II championship, and we're hoping that this one will be equally combative. A good crowd out here at Bree Stevens Field. And Pulaski continue the attack with Noah Thiem, their scrum half, marshalling his forces. A steep line for Pulaski. A lot of space there as Whitefish are forced to stay on side, but a drop ball and Whitefish pounce. Thiem continues to recycle ball for a Pulaski. Some hard forward running, but identified early, and we have a man down for Whitefish Bay. That's Ben Luramon. Luramon, the fly half for Whitefish Bay, is down early in this match, standing at the feet of the referee, Brad Cassetta. Starting in the front row, number one, Gabe Cesarini, number two, John O'Milky, and number three, Mike Fiedler. In the locks, we have number four, Austin Steinmetz, and number five, Joe Beck. Playing loose forward, number six, Eddie Dixon, number seven, Sam Weber, and eight man, Dane Fleck. Our scrum half is Luke Henricks. Our fly half is Ben Larriman. At wings, we have Joe Larriman and Henry Frandel. And in the centers, we have number 12, Steve Meyer, and number 13, Joe Martinez-Ortiz. At fullback, we have number 15, Joey McMahon. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks as though Ben Laramon, who was down injured just a little while ago, is uh, going to stay in this game. He has the knee braced. Yeah, 
finds Todd to have a line out to Pulaski. And we are back with Pulaski rolling forward. And Whitefish desperately trying to eke out possession here, but Pulaski doing very well to push through their forwards. And a hard run at the line now. If it seems as though we're having difficulty bringing you the numbers and names of the Pulaski players, that's because they're wearing camouflage on their backs today in this championship game. But Pulaski is uh, doing very well. Noah Thiem, influential at scrum half, keeping the phases rolling for Pulaski as they are put into touch on the far side of the field. So an inspirational moment early by, for Whitefish Bay when Ben Laramond, down injured, chose to stay on the field, his knee braced. And we'll see what kind of possession they can muster now in their own half. They do secure the lineup with some agile, agile play with their jumpers. And the boot is put in. Pulaski in the back three, play the ball, and they are isolated. Whitefish swarm over the ball, trying to secure possession. And Pulaski are gonna have to work hard to do so, but they secure and move forward again. The ball is loose and Pulaski have turned the ball over. This scrappy play is indicative of our first high school fixture to the Division II championships in which the teams took a little while to settle into their systems, to settle into the game. Pulaski are now going to have a put into the scrum. It's Tyler Wojcieleski, Jeremy Bartels, and Max Mueller in the front row for Pulaski, and they get a good shove on. Theme at the back moves the ball, and Szymanski at fly half. And once again, Pulaski returned to their tried and true method of a rolling mall. It continues to roll inch by inch, and the referee has screamed for them to play it. The ball comes loose. Theme moves the ball to the left and into the hands of their massive forwards. Pulaski enjoying almost all of the possession so far in this game. Ball now in the hands of Levy Van Lannen. Theme moves the ball left. Logan Schemanski, the fly half. To Vanderloop, the open side, a run for the line. And he is put into touch. It must be said that the fighting ruse of Pulaski have put the ball in their pouches this morning and have secured possession. They have a bounce in their step. Their tails are up and they are, have been boxing Whitefish Bay back into their own end. So Whitefish Bay now under a bit of pressure in their own end. Their front row of Gabe Seravine, John O'Milky, and Mike Fielder are going to have a job to do to make sure they secure this ball well. It's put in by Luke Hendricks. And a turnover deep in the Whitefish end as they could not secure the ball and Pulaski are over for the score, deep in the corner. Ball the the scrum, 
It was open side, Kalen Vanderloop, who pounced on that loose ball. And that's what can happen when you get yourself into a set piece situation deep in your own end. If you cannot execute and keep possession cleanly, there is the danger of something like that happening. And Whitefish Bay have been uh, put under a lot of pressure in this match by Pulaski. Jeremy Bartles is going to line up this kick. It's deep on the left touch line. The kick is up. It is on line. And ladies and gentlemen, it is good. An outstanding kick by Jeremy Bartles. We have seen some outstanding kicking at these Wisconsin High School Championships. Jeremy Bartles just nailed a kick worthy of a collegiate team from the far left-hand touch line and through the post it goes to bring the Pulaski Fighting Ruse a seven to nothing lead. Whitefish Bay are gonna have to restart here and we will see whether or not they can secure some possession for themselves. It has been one way traffic so far in this game. Pulaski roll over again, committing huge numbers to the breakdown. The try coming off a Whitefish Bay mistake in the scrum in their own end. There have been few breaks and wide open runs in this game so far, but Whitefish Bay now have possession inside the Pulaski half. And we will see what they can do. Like They need to put their offense to work. They move the ball right and laterally. The number one rule of rugby is go forward. Whitefish Bay going sideways at the moment and a turnover comes. Pulaski's away with it and they pile into the ruck to secure that ball. Thiem moves his ball right. That's Jacob Haynes, the inside center, dodging, weaving, and stolen by number nine, Luke Henricks. Whitefish Bay with some impressive movement here. That was Larriman winding up on a series of offloads at fly half. Number 12 is Steven Meyer, he moves it left. This is much better from Whitefish Bay as they penetrate deep in to the Pulaski half. Black jerseys piling into the ruck trying to secure that ball. The referee says play on and they move it again. Hard runs now at the Pulaski line, a bit of an overlap forming on the right hand side. Screaming for the ball are the Whitefish backs and they move it to the right. Run down the right hand side for Whitefish Bay. They are over the 10 meter line, they still have possession. Black jerseys now, it forms a mall. What can they do from here? Straight ahead running is what's needed. They move it sideways first. The ball ends up in the hands of Joe Martinez Oritz. Martinez Ortiz, pardon me. The tap and go by Whitefish Bay. Ben Laraman at fly half has taken it in. They move the ball to the right, and it's Henry. Randall in a race for the corner. Whitefish Bay in possession as they roll forward deep in the right hand corner of the Pulaski end. Huge space on the left hand side. Surely this must be a try. They come back through the middle and a try it is for Whitefish Bay under the post. Joe Loriman. A dynamic run, Loriman could have raced for the corner, but he knew the conversion would be that much easier if he scored under the post. A hard cut and a run for the line by Loriman. And Whitefish Bay has scored a try under the post, the conversion to come. If successful, they will have tied this game in what has been their best series of possessions so far in the first half of this boys division one high school Wisconsin championship. That was, a, that was an excellent phase by Whitefish Bay. They went 18 phases back and forth across the field before Larriman was able to finish under the post. Conversion attempt from Whitefish Bay was just a bit outside. So with the missed conversion, Pulaski maintained a 7-5 lead. But Whitefish Bay finding a bit of their inner warrior here. Right 
as it's now Pulaski who are walking very slowly back to the restart line. What kind of restart skills can they demonstrate here? A deep kick, a bouncing kick, taken on the run by Whitefish Bay. Big hits coming in from Pulaski, but Whitefish are able to move the ball quickly. Left they come as a big run by the Whitefish forward pack. Warriors move the ball left and left again. Looking for mismatches, looking for space. Whitefish Bay have their tails up in this match, but they have crowded themselves into the left-hand side. They're vulnerable to a counterattack, and Pulaski now has it. Pulaski in their purple stripes move the ball left, and there is space here on the left-hand side. The ball into the hands of number 12, Steve Meyer, and he is racing away, marshaled into touch. As Whitefish Bay were able to scramble in defense, one of the things that all high school rugby teams must be careful of is to allow themselves to be crowded in defense into one specific part of the field, leaving huge amounts of space for any conceivable counterattacks. And Pulaski are now going to try and pen Whitefish Bay deep in their own end, force a mistake here. Some big defense coming in from Pulaski. They have them held up. The referee's going to blow the whistle if they cannot make that ball available. The referee's screaming at them that they must use the ball. Whitefish has seconds left to do something with this or the ball is going to be blown dead. Excellent defense by the Pulaski ruse and it does come loose and Whitefish Bay use it. The ball bounces, the referee says play on. It's Larriman, Ben Larriman this time at fly half looking for support. A little bit of a shoulder charge there. The referee says play on. Great counter rocking by the Pulaski fighting ruse. Left come Whitefish Bay, looking for space, looking for the opening that's going to allow them to take the lead in this match. They've been looking a much stronger team in the last 10 minutes, and Pulaski are marched back 10 meters. Whitefish Bay accelerate the pace, and they come to the right side of the field. They have an overlap. They have a mismatch. They need to move the ball, but they are tied up, and an excellent tackle. A little bit too aggressive, perhaps, in the tackle by Pulaski. So referee having a little bit of a chat here with the defenders from Pulaski. It was a big hit. It was an impressive hit. But unfortunately, the body position of the man with the ball tilted laterally. And of course, you're not allowed to lift the man off the ground in rugby as a safety precaution. So despite the good and intense defense from Pulaski, Whitefish Bay now with an excellent attacking position, five meters out, deep in the corner. It's okay. I, I can sit. Great line out take by Whitefish Bay. The driving mall comes in. Pulaski has held this up before, and in fact, they look to have gotten their hands in there. Can Whitefish Bay secure possession? They can. They're inches away now, Whitefish Bay. A drive for the line through the midfield. They're under the post. Literally, they have inches to go. Will they go forward or will they go wide? They spread the ball and big hits coming in from Pulaski, driving them backwards. 10 meters back now are Whitefish Bay and the turnover comes. Pulaski have the ball. Can they counterattack? Can they move it? Forward they come, they're now back up to their own 22. Excellent pressure relief by Pulaski. They move the ball, they have a huge overlap on the right hand side. What will they choose to do with it? There's a kick option there, but they choose to run. Back into the midfield they come. Pulaski looking for the offload. There it is, they have it now an overlap on the right. Excellent work by Pulaski. Big hits coming in, and the ball put into touch. A heroic defensive effort there from Henry Frandel. 
That was a try-saving tackle by Frandel. He was the only defender that was going to be able to catch the Pulaski attack at that point, and his tackle drove the ball into touch. His team will now have the line out. And the Whitefish Warriors making an impressive comeback against the Pulaski Fighting Ruse. The player also received the ball within five meters of the touchline. That's an infraction. We'll have a free kick to Pulaski on the line that the lineup was supposed to take place. <laughs> Pulaski on the attack here, using forward pods, trying to break down the Whitefish defense. There's 13 minutes left to go in this half. Pulaski maintain a 7-5 lead here in the Division I State Championships. Noah Thiem spins the ball wide. Pulaski looking for overlaps, looking for space in the wide channels. They need quick ball if they're going to accomplish that. When the ball is slow, the Whitefish defense has time to settle, and they are settled now. Another run of the line. Another big tackle by Whitefish. Pulaski committing three, four, five men to the ruck, and still the ball comes slowly. A good dodge for the line by Thiem. They are closing in slowly on the Whitefish Bay 22, marching forward a meter at a time. The Pulaski back line stands steep, looking for overlaps. They may in fact have one there, if Thiem can see it. Forward pod after forward pod, rolling forward by Pulaski. They're now inside the Whitefish Bay 22. And not releasing is the call. Now, what kind of choices do Pulaski have an impressive choice here inside the 22 line. They are going to go for goal. Now, this is an excellent call if it works because the game would be moved to a 10 to 5 lead, making sure that even a try from Whitefish Bay would only tie the game. We are inside 12 minutes left in the first half, and it will be Jeremy Bartels, whose kicks have already impressed here on this championship Sunday in Madison. Less impressive that time was Bartles, a bit of a missed kick, and Whitefish Bay are going to come away with it. Scrappy ball as both teams pile into the contact area. The ball comes left, and a good clearing kick. Let's see what the Pulaski back three can do with this. They are tackled in possession. They look for space down the right-hand side. Pulaski back to their forward pods. Another pod forming on the right, easily targeted by Whitefish Bay. Easily stopped. The Pulaski back line looking steep, looking to get the ball. The ball has been slowing coming for both teams here today. Whitefish Bay marched back on a penalty. No sense of urgency from Pulaski. They are the team in the lead. Here comes the tap. And big hits coming in from Whitefish Bay. Low hits. Knocking the ball carriers to the ground. Whitefish Bay dealing effectively with these forward pod runs by Pulaski. Shepherding them ever closer to the touch line. Shepherding, shepherding them into limited space. Now maybe the Pulaski backs will be able to stretch their legs. Thiem looks to move the ball wide. A run at the line. Space opens up in the midfield. And they are in to the Whitefish Bay 22, directly in front of the posts. Mismatch is on the right-hand side, and that's the way they go. Thiem, Pulaski, moving the ball to their outside channels, looking for mismatches. Again, it comes slowly, though.
this game becoming a huge grind in the forward areas, the contact area, seeing a lot of combat. The ball emerging slowly, but now a breakthrough comes. Pulaski with pumping legs and shoulders drives to within inches of the line, and they are over. Pulaski have scored in the corner, taking this game out to a 12 to five lead with a difficult conversion kick to come. It was all leg strength and shoulders, pumping legs from the Pulaski forward pack, worthy of the heroic ruse. That try scored by number one, Tyler Voshliski. After a big play by num big number eight, Hunter Van Evenoven, a six foot five senior has made a big impact on the fringe and seems to be poised to break away at a number of phases later on in the game. Bartels puts a much better kick in, but this time it sails in front of the posts. Whitefish Bay now jogging with purpose back to the midway point. They trail 12 to 5 with 7.45 left in this game. The ball sails high, and Pulaski takes it easily. Again, with legs pumping, fighting for every yard are the Pulaski Roos. They have maintained strong amounts of possession in the dying minutes of this first half. Another forward pod dealt with fairly easily by Whitefish Bay. Offloads coming from Pulaski, but it looks as though crossing Instructions calling, being called in from the Whitefish sidelines. Big kick coming now from Whitefish Bay. Effective kick as well. That will carry them 30 meters into the Pulaski half and the best attacking opportunity of the game recently for the Whitefish Bay Warriors. They will have the throw into the line out seven meters out. A couple of steps and a line-out tap for Whitefish Bay. They carry it forward. That was Mike Fielder. And now John O'Milkey. Through the middle comes the Whitefish Bay number 10, Larriman. His brother already having scored a try today. Under the posts are the Whitefish Bay Warriors. They need only inches to obtain their second try. And ladies and gentlemen, they have done it. The crowd raises their arms, but it was only a penalty to Whitefish Bay. They're still within inches. And there it is. Whitefish Bay have their try. It was always coming. They were within inches and making good progress. Pulaski was forced to infringe. And that try by the hooker for Whitefish Bay, John O'Milkey. Try for Whitefish Bay scored by number two, John O'Milkey. This kick very important now for Whitefish Bay. A successful conversion would tie the game. Some big encouragement coming in from the sidelines, but the number nine, Luke Henricks, has a job to do here. A successful kick would tie the game, and it sails within inches of the right-hand post. Its score remains 12 to 10 for Pulaski here with four minutes dying 
minutes of the first half. These games here at the Rugby State Championships have been very competitive. The Division II match between Elkhorn and Parkway was a very close game, separated only by one score, Elkhorn fighting to the very last minute. And the first half here is no exception. Whitefish Bay and Pulaski both with two tries. The difference was a kick by Jeremy Bartles, a conversion kick. Good line speed by Pulaski, good stepping by the number 10, Ben Larriman, who's playing with his knee braced this afternoon. And a big box kick, a huge box kick that is going to bounce, unfortunately, into the Pulaski end. An outstanding box kick by Luke Hendricks. One of the best box kicks I've seen in a high school game. Whitefish Bay again on the attack. They are looking to finish this half strongly. They would love to finish this half in the lead. Again, they roll forward pods. Pulaski doing well not to commit too many men to the breakdown. They seem to be targeting the Whitefish attacks very well. Their defensive line holding for now, but there's a big gap on the right-hand side. They have numbers, and that's the way they go. To the wing they go, legs pumping is Henry Frandel. Whitefish Bay working around the fringes. They are seven meters out. Now they move the ball wide. Laraman steps, steps again, brings it back inside, looking for forwards to support him. He's now within five meters of the line. Good work here by Whitefish Bay. The ball is loose and forward they go. Referee says play on. Whitefish Bay in the wide channels looking to close in on the Pulaski try line. They are driving, mauling, rolling inches away now are Whitefish Bay. Pulaski with the turnover and into the wide channels they go. Pulaski have the ball and they have a breakaway down the left side. Frandel is the only man who can catch him. Willie. It's a foot race, and once again, a heroic tackle by Henry Frandel. Unfortunately, the hand slipped high. Pulaski will have a chance to play. The referee is jogging under the post. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have some explaining to do, but a penalty try has been awarded. A knife edge call. So Levi Van Lemmen with a huge run for Pulaski, a breakaway, tracked down from behind by Fr Henry Frandel, but unfortunately the tackle came in high. The referee then deciding that a try would have been scored, but not for that illegal tackle, awards the penalty try. So once again, Jeremy Bartles. Well, Wabo just says, but if not for the action of the defender, it would have otherwise been a try. Right. So I think that's a penalty try. Jeremy Bartles with a successful kick. And instead of finishing this game and half in the lead, Whitefish Bay will finish with a score of 19 to 10. The successful kick from Bartles taking Pulaski out to a nine point lead. We're at halftime here at the Division I Championship. I got Pulaski coach Cole Koopman. Uh, Cole, tell me a little bit about uh, what went well for Pulaski in the first half. Uh, we kept it in our forwards. We maintain, maintained possession very well. Um, our pick and goals are working. We did a great job rucking. 
um, and our lineouts, our scrums were also very good. Who, uh, what, what player or a couple players you think need to are going to have a big impact if you guys are going to win this game in the second half? Our back three and our scrum, our flankers and our eight man, they're going to get, they're going to be doing some more work defensively. Uh, White Fist Bay is doing a good job taking advantage of overloads. Uh, we just need our forwards to do some work, get to the far side of the ruck, and help out our backs on defense. You play, you played high school rugby. Tell me what you think about this environment we're getting to play in here, and uh, what good it's doing for your high school kids. How do they, how they feel in the experience? Oh man, I, I played in high school. I played in the state tournament. I'm real jealous of these kids out here. It's uh, I mean, this is a great place to play. I mean, nicest place Pulaski's ever played. I can say that. That's for sure. Thanks a lot, Cole. Good luck. Thank you, man. We're at a halftime here at the Division One State Championship. I got Coach Jerry Seavey from Whitefish Bay. Tell me a little bit about what went well for you guys in the first half and, and what you need to improve on to, to turn this in your favor. Well, I thought our tackling was okay. Um, they got a little flurry on us at the end. Um, we're, the, the key for us is we're making too many mistakes. Um, you know, they got that try, the ball shot off the side of loose or Wayne picks it up and takes it the distance. I mean, that's a, that's a tough break, and it's, you know, good for them. Clean up the rucks a little bit more. Um, I told the guys, I said, you guys know you made too many mistakes. We talked about it earlier. Whoever makes the least mistakes is going to win. So just keep playing their game and we can come back. So you, got, you got a player, a certain player you think could make an impact here in the second half? Well, I, they will. a little scary that our fly half dislocated his kneecap to start the game, but he got it, he's gotten it through it. Yeah. So he's one of our best players. But our captain, our uh, number nine scrum half, he's taken leadership. So I've been happy to hear what he's been saying to the guys getting ready for the second half. Well, good luck. Look Thank forward you. to a good half. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with some thunderous applause coming from the stands here at Bree Stevens Field in Madison. The score currently with Pulaski 19, Whitefish Bay 10, and we'll take you back to that influential moment late in the first half. A break down the field by Pulaski saw a heroic effort from Henry Frandel, the Whitefish Bay wing. His tackle ruled to be illegal by the referee then resulted in a penalty try. The ruling being that no one else would have been able to stop it but for the illegality. So that now sees the score at 19 to 10 despite some very very hard work from Whitefish Bay and Frandel trying his best to make an impact now with some good runs. <coughs> Big runs here by Whitefish Bay and a breakaway down the field and under the post. Whitefish Bay are going to get some points back on the board here. It's Luke Hendricks, their scrum half, who tore through the Pulaski defense and under the post he goes. Excellent play by Hendricks. We just heard at halftime Coach Jerry CB mentioned how his fly half is hampered a little bit with a knee injury and was hoping that, that Hendricks would continue to step up, and he's done that in a huge way in the first opening minute. What a run, a slicing run by Luke Hendricks in the opening minutes of this second half, and boy, did the Pulaski-Whitefish match need a little bit of that. Whitefish Bay have responded big time here in the second half and have now closed the gap. The flags are up, it is 19-17. Game on here in the second half of the Division I Boys High School Wisconsin Championships. Huge voices now thundering from the Whitefish Bay sidelines. The Pulaski support in the crowd trying to urge on their team. Excellent contest here at Breeze Stevens Field in Madison. 27 minutes left, a two point lead for Pulaski. The ball 
deep into the whitefish end. Dangerous field position here for Whitefish Bay. They need to clear. They pile in and so does Pulaski. Who comes out with the ball? Whitefish Bay and a good clearing kick and out into the touch area it goes. The safety of touch is found. So often in high school rugby you see teams crumble under that sort of pressure. A competent clearing kick by Whitefish Bay and Pulaski will have the ball but now they have some work to do having taken this line out outside the Whitefish Bay 22 and in fact Whitefish Bay recapture possession. Ahead they come using their forwards to crash into the Pulaski defense. Now a little bit more width in the skip pass for Whitefish Bay. Pulaski doing a great job on the counter rock slowing this down but illegally not releasing is the call. Now if history is any judge, Whitefish Bay will try and gain some valuable yards here. They've gained up to 30 meters on these penalty kicks before. Not so much on this one, about 15 meters. They'll still be inside their own half. Line out coming for Whitefish Bay. And they take it, although it's a bouncing ball. Man tilted in the air. And it looks as though we have a penalty infringement in the line out. We're going to have a free kick awarded to Pulaski. On the charge now are the Pulaski forwards. And through a half gap they go. Pulaski need to look for space here. This is a big moment in the match for them. They have a good position. Penalty infringement against Whitefish Bay. Back 10 more meters they go. Now, this is a very kickable penalty for Pulaski. They have a very strong kicker in Jeremy Bartels, but they choose to tap and go in front of the post. Three points would have been crucial there as it would have taken the lead out to five, but they choose to move it forward again, and the turnover comes. A wasted opportunity for Pulaski, and a break now for Whitefish Bay up the middle of the field. That was John O'Milky, the hooker. Straight up the middle they go. Whitefish Bay piling into the ruck, trying to secure. They bring the ball right, forward pod, dealt with by Pulaski and thrown to the ground. Whitefish Bay have bunched themselves into one corner of the field. Only Henry Frandel lurks on the far side. He has good speed. They would be wise to look for him. Now a little more width in the Whitefish Bay back line. The referee has called a side entry penalty. Now, deep breaths from the Whitefish Bay Warriors. What will their decision be? This time, a more effective kick for touch. A 20 meter kick will bring them inside the Pulaski half. We have 23 minutes remaining in this Division I Boys State Championship game. Stolen in the line out. Pulaski ball. Whitefish Bay piles into the ruck. What can Pulaski do here? Again, we have a whistle and we have a knock forward. It's going to be a put into the scrum for Whitefish Bay. Luke Hendricks, the Whitefish Bay scrum half, is going to have the put into the scrum here. Now, the Lehrman brothers at 10 and 11 are good movers of the ball. If Whitefish Bay can secure this scrum, there may be a good attacking opportunity. They are only about 10 meters inside the Pulaski half. It would be absolutely great for Whitefish Bay if they could make some further inroads here. 
They are down by two points with 22 minutes left in this championship match. Players sucking in oxygen. We may finally get our scrum here as Luke Henricks looks to put the ball in for Whitefish Bay. Dane Fiek at the back. Luke Henricks comes away with the ball. On the charge now for Whitefish Bay. Intercept! And Pulaski is down the field. Breakaway for Pulaski, and they are going to be in under the posts. The Pulaski Roos have caught Whitefish Bay with a sucker punch here at 20 minutes left in the second half, and it's Jacob Haynes. that came away with that. The number 12 inside center for Pulaski stepped into the gap, took the ball on the intercept, and would not be caught as he sailed down the pitch. The ball is under the posts, and for all of Whitefish Bay's endeavor, they are now going to find themselves down by an even greater margin. Those are the type of mistakes that come back to haunt you in championship rugby. Influential moments in this match. The penalty try in the first half and now the intercept try in the second. Jeremy Bartels with his boot has extended the Pulaski lead. And it is now 26-17. So Whitefish Bay walked back to halfway and they know now that they have their work cut out for them. It is a two score game. Not just that, it is a two try game. Two tries are gonna be needed. for Whitefish Bay to claw themselves back in this. They know they're capable of it. There's 19 minutes left. They've enjoyed some very good possession here, but it's gonna take something special for them to make a comeback. Pulaski under a lot of pressure here by the Whitefish Bay defense being driven back into their own half. And now some open space comes. Pulaski down the near side of the field. High straight arms coming in by Pulaski. They have the ball and they need to move it quickly. Whitefish Bay reorganizing their defense. Theme moves the ball left. Hovering over the ball is the scrum half, Noah Theme. Looking and it is back on the Whitefish Bay side. They need to secure it. And it has become very, very scrappy on the ground right now. The referee shouting for Pulaski to step back out of the way. Big hits coming in now from Pulaski. Whitefish Bay need to move the ball. They need field position and they need scores. 18 minutes left in this game, 26 to 17 for the Pulaski Roos in this Division I championship. Penalty against Pulaski, and they go quickly. Offload, and here come the Whitefish Bay RFC down the left hand side of the field but once again we have a referee's whistle
with that throw not having gone five meters. Whitefish Bay on the free kick and another attacking chance. They need to start taking advantage of these opportunities. We are under 17 minutes to play here. And a nine point lead for the Pulaski Roos over the Whitefish Bay Berserkers. A loose ball and we have another breakaway for Pulaski. Will they be caught? This could be the decisive score of the match and they are in in the corner. A loose ball pounced on by the Pulaski wing. Sequoia Rasmussen. That is one of the most glorying, one of the most glorious moments in the career of any winger is to see a loose ball bouncing in front of you with no defenders. And Sequoia Rasmussen picked up that ball and executed his breakaway perfectly down the far side of the pitch and touched down in the corner to extend his team's lead now out to 31-17 with 15 minutes left. And that may be a bit of a knife through the heart for the Whitefish Bay Berserkers. And that ball is up, and that ball is good. Jeremy Bartels, ladies and gentlemen, look for that young man coming to a collegiate program near you in the near future. Let's get that kid some bright orange boots. Those green ones do not do him justice. And the Pulaski fighting ruse. have now extended their lead by another two points. Now 33 to 17. And they are in a commanding position here in this Division I Boys High School Championship game. Make sure that you are following all of your Wisconsin Rugby Associations on Twitter. The Wisconsin Rugby Club at WRC underscore rugby and at Rugby Madison. And while you're at it, why not follow at USA Rugby, the home of your US Eagles, and take in some of the great summer internationals that are going to be on Universal Sports as your U.S. Eagles prepare for the 2015 Rugby World Cup in England. And what a contest that's going to be in Pool B. Make sure you learn all about it and support your United States Eagles. Whitefish Bay has absolutely no quit in them here with 13 minutes left, trailing 33 to 17. And Pulaski is going to have to deal with a big charge here from Whitefish Bay. They surge over the Pulaski 22, looking for space, putting four or five players into the ruck. Down the side they go, into the corner, and into touch we go, despite the screams of no coming from the bench of Whitefish Bay. The flags have a way of disappointing even the most ardent supporters. That ball is in touch and it will be Pulaski's throw into the line out. Crucial moment for them. You'll remember there, are, there have been tries scored on just such occasions if the execution is not there. Whitefish Bay have stolen this line out. And they are coming in search of their own try to narrow the score here. Winding the game a little bit, but thrown to the ground. Are the Whitefish Bay Berserkers, they are inches away. They are surging over the line in search of a try now. 
and the try is awarded. Sprinting back over the 22 are the Whitefish Bay Berserkers. They have taken their point score up over 20. Now 33 to 22, an 11 point deficit with a kick to come. We are under 12 minutes to play in this Division I high school championship game and the Whitefish Bay Berserkers have a try off the effort of Dane Fleck, their number eight. And Ben Larriman looking to add another two points for his team. That kick is up and that kick is good. Answering Bartel's kick. Ben Larriman playing with a braced right knee has taken a point total to nine. Whitefish Bay are alive and kicking here in this championship match. There are 11 minutes left. And the body language coming from Pulaski may be a bit of a sign. They are taking their time walking back to the halfway marker. Time is off here as the referee is speaking to them. Remember that the referee is the sole arbiter of time. The time we are giving you up here in the command center is only our amateurish interpretation. The referees watch, the only thing that matters. We can tell you that there are approximately 11 minutes left. And Whitefish Bay now have the ball again. They need to score and score again. It is a two, two score game here at Breeze Field in Madison and they are inside their own 22 meter line. They move the ball with some ambitious passing but it looks like they have been caught in possession. Back 10 is the order to the Pulaski Roos who look to it, they have take, taking some penalties in fatigue here and Whitefish Bay have their tails up. They are coming for the championship. They are coming to narrow the lead of the Pulaski Roos. And those efforts have been interrupted by a turnover. Pulaski, as they have all day, looking for a quick counterattack. Whitefish Bay are gonna have to scramble in defense here. Pulaski off a turnover, are suddenly in a very threatening position. The ball comes wide. One more pass should see them in. And one more pass they get. It's going to be a score under the post for the Pulaski Roos. And moving the ball to space is Sequoia Rasmussen, who has already scored a try in today's game. Whatever else this game has been, it has not been dull at any point. The score now 38 to 24 for the Pulaski Roos. Whitefish Bay in the middle of their heroic comeback, caught with yet another sucker punch. A turnover, a break, and all of a sudden, a quick move to space. Sees Rasmussen score in the corner. And Jeremy Bardells, who has been kicking over the points all day today for Pulaski, has an opportunity to take his team to 40. An impressive point score with a relatively easy kick. He's been making these all day. And one more kick and two more points for Jeremy Bardells. His point score alone today represents most of his team's margin of... <laughs> Jeremy Bartles has been a very influential player in this game. His kicks represent most of the current margin of lead for the Pulaski Roos. And it is Whitefish Bay currently struggling to maintain possession here. As the clock kicks down under eight minutes, it becomes the fierce ally of Pulaski. They have a 16 point lead and it would take more than two converted tries for Whitefish Bay to come back in this one. Still you feel there'll be no quit in Whitefish Bay. They have not exhibited a let up at all today. 
whatever the result, they can certainly be proud of their performance. So amazing to see the quality of rugby being played in Wisconsin. Some of these players hopefully will move themselves on to higher standards of club and collegiate rugby in the years to come, making their way possibly even into the national identification system. But right now, their immediate target is the state high school championships, and it is Pulaski firmly despite the enormous screams by the Pulaski sideline to kick for posts. The clock continues to run and a little bit of blood rushing to the head of the Pulaski players. Their, coach, their coaches were screaming at them to kick the ball through off the boot of Jeremy Bartels who of course has been making a very high percentage of his kicks today. That would have taken some more time off the clock. In the end, it may not matter. Five minutes left here in this match. 40 to 24 is the score. The Pulaski Ruse looking very good for their 16 point lead. And on every whistle now, the clock ticks down even more. Just like to remind our fans watching this match on the YouTube channel of Wisconsin Rugby Club that you can visit usarugby.org to learn about some of the outstanding USA Rugby events that are happening around the country as well as the ones happening right here in Wisconsin. It has been my pleasure to uh, have been your host for these championship games and to uh, lend a little bit of story to these outstanding efforts by these young men from high schools across Wisconsin. My name again is Jeff Hull. I am the featured columnist for CNN's Bleacher Report. You can follow me on Twitter if you like, at Hull at home. It's always nice to have a few extra Twitter followers from Wisconsin. Jeremy Bartles who certainly has my vote for MVP today. His boot carrying most of the margin of lead is another kick, and this one is going to sail wide. In the end, that missed kick, probably not going to make much of a difference. We're now under four minutes to play. Whitefish Bay in possession, but they have a very long distance between themselves and the Pulaski try line. Pulaski seem to have their tails up now as they sense the game is ending. And a half break by Whitefish Bay ends up being forward. Such outstanding support shown by the Wisconsin and Madison rugby communities over the course of this weekend. These high school championships coming on the tail end of outstanding high school playoffs and competitions throughout the state. And here in Madison at the tail end of the national club championships hosted by Wisconsin and Madison. And involving clubs from across the United States. all in preparation for what promises to be an outstanding summer of rugby with the USA Eagles taking on the likes of Japan, Scotland, and Canada this summer, all in preparation for the Rugby World Cup in 2015. It's a great time to be a rugby fan in America. So the story shall be that the Pulaski Ruse off a series of excellent and opportune counterattacks, intercept tries, and the like, have built themselves a 40 to 24 lead here in the dying minutes of the second half of this Division I state championship game. And 
and we will take the opportunity to let you know the man of the match on either side a little later on. The award ceremonies to come in just a few minutes and we'll have the opportunity to recognize all of the young men who put their bodies on the line in today's game. Pulaski with one more throw of the dice. The referee's whistle ends that attack. And now we are into the last minute of play in this game. You couldn't have asked for better weather. You couldn't have asked for a better atmosphere for these games and this weekend of rugby here in Madison. Great friends made by myself and I'm sure many of the uh, high school players who have assembled here. Rugby has a way of building friendships that will last uh, a lifetime and I'm sure that that will continue for the majority of these players as they move on to higher levels of rugby. Whitefish Bay would love a try to end this game and their season, but as we have seen throughout this match, Pulaski has been able to turn the ball over and counter attack. Just seconds remaining in this match. And as Pulaski kicks the ball to touch, The fans begin to celebrate, and I believe that they know exactly what's coming. The referee says we have time for one more line out. And a sea of purple arises in the stands for this last line out of the game. They know their team has done enough to take the state championship, and the trophies are now being brought down to the field. Big performances from Pulaski today. from the likes of John Sapansky, Sequoia Rasmussen with two tries, Levy Van Lannen, Whitefish Bay comes tearing down the field, looking as we said for that final score that would give them a bit of pride. Okay, so we'll give you the men of the match now for both teams. For the Whitefish Bay Berserkers, man of the match is Luke Henricks, who was influential throughout the game at Scrum Half. And uh, the man of the match for the 2014 state champion, Pulaski Ruse, is John Chapansky. This is Jeff Hall signing off from the broadcast position here at Breeze Field in Madison. We're going to go down to the field for the championship awards. Congratulations to the 2014 state champion, Pulaski Roos.